to uh, call to order the meeting of the Fall River Task Force. Uh, it is Wednesday, May 8th, 3.30 p.m., actually 3.36 p.m. Um, pursuant to the open meeting law, any person may make an audio or video recording of this public meeting or may transmit the meeting through any medium. Attendees are therefore advised that such recordings or transmissions are being made, whether perceived or unperceived, by those present and are deemed acknowledged and permissible. Mm -hmm. And we'll have a roll call of committee members. Uh, Mr. Conrad is here. Uh, Carl Hetzler. Here. Mike Quinn. Here. Gloria Sadler is not here. Kathy Viveros. Here. Chairman Kamara. Here. Okay, and there's time for citizen input. Uh, in the absence of uh, any, if anyone arrives, um, they certainly will be given an opportunity to give input into this meeting at any time during the course of the meeting. And uh, we uh, had intended to have a meeting on the 24th of April. Uh, however, that was canceled, uh, and Mr. Bill Keegan, uh, who is currently the town manager in Foxborough, uh, had intended to join us uh, in April uh, and fortunately uh, is able to join us today. Uh, I've had uh, a few conversations with Mr. Keegan. Um, he comes to us uh, with uh, great credentials and highly recommended by the Mass Municipal Association as being one of the more knowledgeable members of the Mass Municipal Association's um, uh, form of government committee. Uh, he's currently the town manager in Foxborough and is also a resident of a nearby Seekonk. So it wasn't too much of a stretch to get here. So, no, not at all. Not at all. so we welcome you, uh, and Mr. Keegan. And generally, um, we've had some good experience with previous uh, managers um, and others uh, who have uh, interchanged ideas. Uh, and we generally open it up to, uh, first of all, you're giving us a little bit of background on mm -hmm. the communities, the type of communities you've served as a, a town manager or a city manager uh, in or any other elected position or any experiences you've had that might be germane to us as we pursue uh, the possibility of moving from what we currently have, which is the plan A form of government, uh, strong mayor, or what has been referred to as strong mayor, city council. As a member of the city council, I tend not to think of the council as a weak council. It has a certainly significant financial responsibilities, fiduciary responsibilities as it relates to the city, but it is referred to as that. And, um, and we're looking at other options, uh, and we'll discuss uh, one particular that we had the experience, uh, four, three of us uh, had the experience of uh, in-depth uh, conversation uh, in Cambridge, but that'll be the next item on the agenda. And you're welcome to stay for as long as you like after you've uh, made your presentation, but there's no obligation to stay beyond um, your presentation, so. I appreciate that. So, um, so thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, for having me here today. Um, just uh, by way of background, um, I, I've been a, uh, involved in local government for about 36 years now. Um, I have a master's degree from regional in regional planning from the University of Massachusetts and uh, undergraduate degree from Westfield State College. Um, just want to be sure the mic is uh, <laughs> flicked up towards you. Yeah, like. Good. Test. There you go. I just need to get it closer to my, closer to me. How's that? Is that That's better? Good, okay, yeah. there we go. I'm thinking more in terms right. of it, this is being televised and, and recorded, so sure. no, for no that problem. purpose. So thank you. So um, I do have a, um, I, like I said, I've been involved in local government for 36 years. Most of the time has been spent here in Massachusetts, but uh, the la but five years was spent in Florida, where I was the uh, Human Resource and Labor Relations Director for the City of Hollywood, Florida, back in 1992 to 1997. Um, beyond that, I was born and raised in Shrewsbury, Massachusetts, and so spent most of my life here in, uh, in the Commonwealth and have um, spent <clears throat> my last 20-plus years living in Seekonk, where I was served as town administrator uh, for about five, five years at, my, at one point in time. Um, I have uh, been in, in Foxborough the last five years. Uh, prior to that, I was in, I was in uh, Dedham for, for 12 years as town administrator. Um, and that we went through, they went through a charter change there, um, and um, I was the last for person to serve in the strong town administrator form of government, um, where they then ultimately went to a town manager form. So I've been familiar with virtually all forms of, of government, um, 
whether we're Massachusetts or beyond, um, we've been, I've, I'm working in a, a town manager open town meeting form in, um, in, in Foxborough currently. Uh, they had the same, similar form in, in Seekonk. Uh, I had a strong town manager form in, um, in Shrewsbury, uh, where the, that, was a, 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 that was an elected town meeting member forum, as, as was the same form in Dedham as well. Uh, open, open town meeting in Wayland, where I served as assistant for, for a few years as well. Just want to be clear, I, I've never been fired from any of the jobs I've, I've, uh, I've left. It was just always by choice and, and by looking at, uh, at um, and moving up in my career in terms of responsibilities. So um, I'm happy to, to answer questions that you may have about the different forms of government. Um, I've worked well with a lot of city managers throughout the state. I'm very close friends with uh, Bernie Lynch, who was the former city manager in Lowell. I think you probably met Bernie at one point. Um, and uh, also at Augustus, who's the current city manager in Worcester. Um, I've not worked currently with the current city manager in Cambridge, but I knew his, his predecessor. So, um, and, and I know th those forms pretty well, knowing that uh, that's what you're looking for. There's also the only three uh, forms, e for plenty of forms that I'm aware of in Massachusetts. Um, there's a lot of different forms in Massachusetts government, as you know. Um, but the, what's happened is that Things have evolved more recently in the, in the years that what's happened is that um, there's been more of a, a, a push towards professional management of, of, of cities and towns, uh, primarily because, not because people don't have the ability to do the work, it's just the fact it's become very, very complex work. And I think that having the background that, that folks like myself have professionally trained in their entire lives for, is uh, we're a little bit better suited to deal with those those complexities than, than those who've who've been um, you know elected at large with uh, with some limited background, but certainly um, not to not to play that down. But certainly it's it seems to be that's just the nature of the work that we have these days. It's just it's a very complex world. Great. So we'll open it up to uh, general questions. Uh, uh, just by introduction, um, I, I've served as a a member of the city council for this is my 20th year mm -hmm. on and off uh, since the uh, uh, late 70s um, and um, also served for four years as a member of the school committee mm -hmm. uh, the other members of the committee I hope will give a brief introduction uh, to you of w what their experiences are uh, prior to their questioning and we'll start with our city administrator who is uh, Kathy Ann mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Pleasure. No, Welcome. Pleasure, pleasure uh, me. Good pleasure to see you. you. I appreciate that. Um, so I currently serve as city administrator, um, mm -hmm. and I'm in my fifth year. Okay. We, um, I also served on the city council for uh, about nine years, so I okay. um, have the elected background as mm -hmm. well as have my MBA, and, uh, but, but did come out of the private sector. Okay. Uh, you asked, uh, oh, you made a point mm. about I, I believe you called it a strong administrative form and then mm -hmm. city manager form. Could you right. speak to the differences between those with regard to perhaps not responsibility, but at least I would assume they're, mm -hmm. they're very similar, but I guess in terms of um, who you were reporting to and what kind of accountability um, might have existed between the two different forms. Well, the, the, the form in, in Dedham was a uh, strong town administrator, um, which reported to the Board of Selectmen. Um, the town manager did the same. Um, it was, the, 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 the difference there were really subtle in many ways. It was a, a more of a case of responsibility for appointments of, of uh, personnel and, uh, and some committees. Um, but mostly um, the, the budget responsibility fell to the town manager or town administrator. So that, that didn't change in the latest changes that were made. The title changed, of course, and then there was also um, uh, some additional um, um, committees or, or, or departments that actually fell under the, under the town, manage, town manager as opposed to the previous, previous form. Um, they eliminated some of the el additional elected bodies through that process. So they had uh, fewer elected bodies um, by virtue of the new changes that were made. That said, um, the, the changes were not significant, um, but it, it, cause, because as I looked at that charter in, um, in Dedham, it was actually written like a town manager form. 
Uh, it was just so the changes were actually quite subtle, but they, they wanted to actually finally go to the title. And I think I think what happened, I think at the time when I drew up the, the town administrative form, some folks were a little bit nervous about the title and, and, the, and the level of authority. Um, the reality was that the, the person practiced the, based upon the way the charter was written in the same way that a manager would, would do anyways. So it was more, it was more like I said, um, um, it, it really wasn't a, a, a significant change. It was more of a subtle change. Because that's, that's actually one of the options that we uh, were mm -hmm. charged at reviewing. You know, uh, the Charter Commission had originally done some community polling, and mm -hmm. uh, the form of city manager came back. It actually got a fairly positive response. Uh, Mr. Quinn served on that committee. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it didn't it didn't breach the 50 percent mark, but it came it came close as I recall. Mm -hmm. But in any event, it was our first charter revision, mm -hmm. so I I think they were trying to limit the number of issues that were going to be right. uh, embraced with the new charter. But um, I don't see a huge difference in those responsibilities. Right. It sounds like that's consistent. Right. However, you you did trigger something else. Mm -hmm. You said the new city manager form had fewer elected positions. Does right. that mean that positions like treasurer and collector that had formerly been elected positions now became professional appointments? No, those are actually in the first iteration of the, of the charter change, which went to the town administrative form, so they made that change at that time. So there was, they used to have elected treasurer collector uh, positions, and then they, they became appointed after the first uh, first change was made. So what were the elected changes made then? So the, 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 the changes that I recall were the, the assessors were elected, then they became appointed. And also the, uh, I'm not sure if it was uh, recreation, we, they talked about doing the recreation commission at one point, but they actually kept that as an elected board. Um, and then there was one other board, and I, I'm sorry, I, don't, I can't remember what it was, but there was one other board that they actually uh, took it from being an elected board into an appointed board. All right, so last question, and then I'm going to let my colleagues uh, ask you questions. In terms mm -hmm. of your evaluations process mm -hmm. in the two roles, mm -hmm. uh, could you speak to whether there was a significant difference in how you were personally evaluated, perhaps in terms of goals or direction that might have been issued to you? Was there any significant difference in the two forms of government along those lines? No, that, that, really, um, <clears throat> that, that really goes to the issue of how the personnel forms are, are written or how the contract is written between the manager and the, and the, and the city council or, or, the town, or the board of selectmen. And um, the, the form that I typically use is one based on the, the ICMA standards, International City Management Association standards. So um, and we use that pretty, pretty, um, pretty universally. I expanded upon it a little bit more this in, in the past few years in Foxborough. We made it a little bit more detailed. Um, and so I think, um, if, I think we're, go we're going to continue to evolve that some more. I think it's really important to have the dialogue between the council or the, or the board of selectmen to determine what's important to them. So that gives clear direction to you as an administrator or, or me as a, as a manager to, to, to carry out the work that they think is the, of most greatest value to the community. Mm -hmm. So I think that's, that's really the most important piece of that. Okay. Um, and I do have one more question. No, that's uh, okay. Based that's on fine. Your, your response. Sure. Um, in terms of policy decisions, mm -hmm. did you find you had more responsibility for setting policy under one form or another, or was it, was it was the elected body, whichever, um, still essentially driving, you know, the policy initiatives that you you were expected to uh, execute? The, the, the elected bodies are the ones that, that primarily drive policy. Now, I will I will say that as a manager or administrator, you, you provide a lot of insight and you provide them with the resources to create good policy. But you don't get involved in debate un unless they're unless asked upon to do so. And so, um, and because there's a lot of different pieces to developing policy and making policies never, it's not always that smooth. It can, it can be debated quite, quite extensively and the, uh, the discussion can, be, can really be wide ranging in many cases. So what I try to do is to try and keep the discussion corralled towards the, towards the major points and, um, and, and keep the, the board focused on, on what the ultimate goal is. Um, but beyond that, 
Um, I've always taken the position that, you know, elected officials drive policy, the manager drives the day-to-day -day operations and carries out the policy. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Ferris. Uh, Mr. Hetzler, or Mr. Quinn, or Ms. Conrad, do you have questions at this time? Ms. Conrad? Mm -hmm. My question would be, have you uh, worked for a place that had a city council? Yes. An elected city council, is that? Yeah, that was in Florida. I actually, oh. I, I worked in Florida for a five-person five city council, um, which I know in the plan E, it's either nine or seven or nine. But um, but it was they actually they actually converted to a seven person city council I believe after I left when I was in Hollywood Florida and did they have a mayor they did they had a five had a, had a mayor and um, a five person it was, which was, was a, which was a f member of the five person board um, but it was a strong city manager so it was a plenty form um, okay. in um, in that in, in that state had it been in place for a while when you it got had it? been actually yes it had been for, for quite some time. And um, it had worked well. Um, you know, uh, politics range in, in places different around the state, down the, on the around the country. Uh, it can be very difficult in some places, and and uh, and smoother in others. I will tell you, in the Midwest, and uh, I would say the mid the mid Atlantic states tend to work pretty well because it's more if more an established city uh, uh, city manager form, uh, manager council form. It's more accepted. Um, in places in the deep south, um, it's it's um, it's a, it becomes a little bit more tumultuous at times, but in the east, uh, believe it or not, it's actually uh, becoming more common. Not not and, and wasn't as common um, as it is as it is now. So I see the there's been since the time that I've been involved in government, and I started when it was 1984. Um, I've seen uh, the, the change from go from a strong executive secretary or not even a weak sec executive secretary to a town administrator to mostly town managers and town administrators now um, or some variation of that and um, and it's becoming more of a move towards council manager uh, which I've seen North Attleboro just went to a council manager which and that's a town but they actually went to that council manager form uh, Franklin is the same structure as that as well and um, and Bridgewater, um, which I think you met Mike, yes, uh, Mike when Mike came yeah. out to meet with you. Uh, uh, so that's and that and those are relatively new forms. Uh, Randolph is a similar structure as well. So it's becoming a little bit more, a little bit more common, and I think the reason that is is because it's harder and harder to get people to come to meetings. I think you probably witnessed that yourselves, uh, just in in terms of people being able to come to meetings. I think they'd rather watch it on TV and see how it plays out, but it's important to have obviously the the participation in those discussions too sometimes to get the feedback so how pe people so the, the elected boards know how things how people really feel you need the mayor in order to tell you how people feel is that what you're saying well I think I think what's happened is it is it's the clear clear delineation between politics and, and administration right. and um, the politics are that that you get the direct interaction with the, with the, the with the electorate and dealing with the the, the public I on, on a day-to-day -day basis, I deal with the public on a regular basis too. But, but I don't deal with them on the political level. I deal with them on the administrative level, fixing their problems and addressing things as they come along. The the the, the um, what's important about it is the interaction between the mayor and the, and the council is is understanding how people really feel about certain issues, and I think that's where you get that, and that's what helps to formulate the policy. Okay. Second follow-up question. So, when you talked about the town, uh, Attleboro specifically, you said they went to a North Attleboro. Okay. Uh, North yeah. Attleboro went yeah. to a council manager form of government. So, did they have town meeting, they either did. representative or at large, and did that change? It did, yeah. So that no longer okay. is going to exist. So North Attleboro hasn't even come into, uh, hasn't, hasn't even started yet. They will. It's so new. It was just recently passed back in, uh, in April, early April. So that that form, I just spoke with the the person who headed up that charter commission this morning, and um, he indicated to me that um, that there's there's been 21 there are 21 people going to run for nine seats in the council, which is which is pretty pretty interesting to see that so that's a good that's a good uh, good representation, and then um, what he said was. Um, that it's going to be interesting to see how people get used to the fact not having town meeting. So, um, because uh, that that obviously can be controversial. 
Uh, people show up once a year or twice a year to, 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 to express their concerns and don't always know all the details on the issue. And so it becomes obviously very complex and, and discussions can be, can be, can be quite, quite lengthy. So. Yeah, thank you. Anything uh, in this end, uh, Mr. Hessler? Sure. Um, Carl Hessler, I'm a business owner in the city. I'll just make sure that mic is flipped up towards you. <coughs> yeah, Carl Hetzler, business owner in the city, um, involved with a lot of boards and committees, but not uh, as a city employee in any capacity. Mm -hmm. um, this city manager position is intriguing to me because I think that um, too often in our city, politics do govern a lot of decisions that are being made, good or bad, and uh, I think that'll always be the, the way it is. But then we have turnover, so we lose some continuity. We're working on a project, and then that project gets sidelined because a new mayor comes in, and he's not in lockstep with that project. So from my point of view, I, I look at it as a, an opportunity for a community to have someone in a position that even if they were to leave their position, the new person who comes in could pick right up and, and mm -hmm. have some continuity. So the question that is still in my mind is, in the city of Fall River, we have nine city councilors. Mm -hmm. Based on all of your experience as a city manager or a city administrator, um, and you have mentioned that in Florida you worked in one community where they had a city council. Right. How would you without necessarily telling us what you think we should do. If, if I was just, you know, having a conversation with you on, on this, mm -hmm. how would you think it would work in a city similar to Fall River where there's currently nine city councilors and a mayor and we're considering putting in a city manager? So what I mean by that is, um, based on your experience, what would be the makeup of Assuming we're going to keep nine city councilors, and I think that's a fairly safe assumption, but the mayor's position as a separate position would probably go away, maybe, maybe not. Mm -hmm. How do you think it works the best in, in, in your experience? Well, well, I've seen it work well when, when there's a good re working relationship between the mayor and the city manager, because the mayor smaller serves as the president of the council you know, in, in many cases. So, um, so what happens is that um, there has to be a good working relationship between them. And, and by the way, um, it can be a little rough if, in fact, the city council isn't supportive of the, of the city manager, former governor. I mean, so if that is, is, is supporting, is supportive, and the relationship works, then certainly there's going to be a lot more uh, dialogue and a lot more things accomplished when, when there's, a, there's a good, uh, good relationship there. But coming into a new, new, a new situation, like that, where the, there's a chart of change, the first year or so is mostly educational to, to determine, you know, the, the bounds and the, and, the, and the limits as to what you can really do, and, wh and who's responsible for what. But I think what's important about it is that everybody has that clear understanding. And there's a good educational uh, process where people can um, truly understand their roles because the roles will change. There's no question about that. And what you said earlier is absolutely true. That, and that's it's the biggest challenge that cities face is when there's there's change, at the change in the in the mayor, uh, in the mayor and the administration, when all of all of, all of a sudden you're working on major projects and all of a sudden they just go they they stop because you have to, re, you have to reeducate the entire new staff that comes in and takes those things over. So I've seen it work really really well with with the, the strong manager form, and the, and the strong and the, and the and the and the council and the, the council manager form. Because I think it does bring that consistency that you need in order to get the, the, those things done. So, I guess what I'm driving at is, and, and you've started answering the question, in a city like Fall River where we have nine city councilors, um, if we were going to make a proposal that needs to be passed, it has to be something that I believe the city council has to be able to accept. Right. Um, the mayor's not an issue. Well, he would be. In this case, he would be because he would have to sign off. Right. Okay whether or not uh, that happens is, is another, another issue with this mm -hmm. whole thing. But let's assume that th those steps were to, were to take place. Mm -hmm. The city council, I'm trying to get my arms around how the city council would be made up. And, and from what I'm hearing from you and others, and correct me if I'm wrong, it would mm -hmm. probably look something like this. The nine city councilors would elect 
from themselves a city council president who would then act as a ceremonial, for lack of a better description, mayor. I think that's fair. Yeah. And, and uh, they collectively would hire a city manager. Right. The city manager would report to them. The city council mm -hmm. president could probably have some additional you know, connection to that city manager mm -hmm. without being his one and only boss, right. or her one and only right. boss. Um, and, and the city manager would then take care of all the uh, administrative uh, actions for the city mm -hmm. and report back to the city council on a monthly, monthly meeting or more frequently than that? Um, it really, it's up to the, the city council and how they, they, once every two weeks or once a month, depending upon how much they want to meet and, and, and cover the issues that are important in the city. Um, but your, your synopsis, I think, is, fairly, is fair. It's a very fair synopsis of what I, I, I vision that to work, and I've actually seen it work. What works best is that once that mayor or city council president or whatever the position you're going to call it is established, then it's up to the city manager to, to, to work with that person directly to understand the politics of the issues. So in other words, you know, you always need to have an understanding of where is the city council on these issues because if, you, if you're going to get things done, you need to understand that so you, can, so you don't waste a lot of time pushing forward on issues that aren't going to get done. Mm -hmm. So um, that relationship has to work almost, you know, in, totally in sync, in my opinion, because it's really, really important to try and get uh, both people on the same page. If that doesn't work right out of the gate, you're going to have, you're going to have friction, you're going to have issues where things just won't get done and, and there'll, be, there'll be a breakdown in the process. So it's really important to have that, that, that relationship. That doesn't mean, by the way, that the city manager shouldn't be on the phone talking to city councilors on a day-to-day -day basis when things come up. I mean, and, and, and ideally, what you'd have a situation if a city council had an issue where they had, you know, constituents that they, they have issues with would call them, would call him and say, look, I got this problem down on such such street, it's a public works issue, it's a, it's a police issue, it's a fire issue, whatever the case may be, they would help, the city manager would help address that for them. Okay. So, um, but I think, you know, that's, that's the way I view the, the relationship to work and work well. Um, like I said, it's it's really a it's 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 a it's a it's an in sync type relationship. Okay. And last question, and if you can just abbreviate, kind of shorten the answer on this: yeah. What are the requirements, in your opinion, that a good city manager should have? So, if we were advertising for a city manager, mm -hmm. what are the top two or three things? Mm -hmm. Well, I think they should have you know a, a, a good education. I, I I think they should have a. Uh, Either a, uh, uh, certainly a bachelor's degree, but most more often nowadays is a, is a master's degree in public administration or related field. My, my degree is not in public administration, but, but regional planning. But, um, but that has served me well because I've understood economic development issues very well because of that. Um, so I think having that, that background is, is issue number one. Two is to have some level of, of, um, of experience working with a city council, working with um, working with a, uh, a mayor, a, you know, a, a mayor, a council mayor form of government. Mm -hmm. Because you know how, right out of the gate you're going to know how, how it's going to work and how it's going to function, so, you, so there's no uptime to, to training that person. Particularly in a place where this is going to be a new, new charter. You've got to have somebody that really understands how it works. And um, that will help ease that, that transition a little bit better by having that person having some level of experience. So I think having that level of experience you're looking at you know five to ten years experience in doing that is is probably a minimum requirement that you would have for that. Okay, thank you. You want? Do you yield, Mr. Tesla? I do. Yes, sir. Mr. Quinn, do you have any questions? Yeah, just one quick question. Um, have you ever seen it not work at all? Like be a complete disaster when it changes over? Um, not when it changes over, but I've actually seen organizations fail. Um, and, and the reason why was because there wasn't there was an, there was an unwillingness on both sides to listen and to and to and to understand what was important to to the community. As a manager, and I think you probably experienced this, is that the most important thing is that it's not as important what's important to me. It's important what's the, what's the community and, the, and what and if the issues if you if you try to interject your own personality and ego into the process, they will fail and will fail miserably. So I think that the key is to, is to have a person into that role um, and the relationship is such that you have to have a person in the role that, that doesn't uh, take themselves, uh, doesn't have a huge ego, but yet has a, a strong enough ego to, to manage their way through difficult scenarios. 
So I think that's, that's probably the, the key the key measure. And then the other question is, in when <coughs> they transfer to the council and the uh, ceremonial mayor essentially or the president's elected, mm -hmm. I would just have. Has there any been any uh, kind of pushback by the people in the community saying that they wanted to pick the mayor, they wanted to elect? that person themselves with their votes? Because that's just some uh, something I could just definitely see happening. OK. So that, that's going to be something you have to work out during the, the charter process and have an understanding and, and have the educational sessions with folks to, to find out what, what's important to them. Um, because normally, it's, 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 it's selected by the council for, for that the council manager form. But, um, but if that becomes an issue that really has to be resolved out in a different way, you really need to understand it because you wouldn't want the whole charter process to fail because of one issue. So sometimes you have to yield on things that you don't want to necessarily want to, but in order to get the bigger picture and resolve the issue overall, you may have to yield on that. But, but I think it's important to have that understanding. You could be entirely right that if some people would, would disagree with having the council pick, pick the president but, or the mayor, but that's how it's really done, and uh, but that doesn't mean that it, can, can, it, has, it has been done differently in other places. Thank you. I, I just, Mr. Quinn, I continue if, if you have any other questions. Uh, Mr. Quinn was also a, a member of our, our previous uh, charter commission, so he brings to this group uh, good good information about that experience. And uh, just as a follow up, though, to uh, his his point. Um, uh, I've, I've thought often that that might be a good model, even though I know it's it's a hybrid model, mm -hmm. uh, not consistent with uh, at least the three Plan E forms that right. are available uh, as models in Massachusetts, specifically uh, Cambridge, Lowell, and Worcester. Uh, but as a member of the council, I've often seen the selection of the president of the council as becoming a very divisive situation among the members of the council that inevitably you get two members right. or more that want to be the council president and because one gets the five votes uh, the one who gets the four votes uh, might feel a sense of being the loyal opposition so therefore there's an adversity to it being a cohesive group right from the get-go on the very first meeting uh, so I, I had often thought uh, that in the in the hybrid system and and it sort of follows and give keeping the people, because I do think the people have, after having had hundreds of years of yeah. electing a mayor, that if they continue to elect it, but knowing that in electing the mayor, the mayor would be the president of the city council, uh, that that would take away that first divisive vote that the council has every two years. And it would give, it would, it would basically do two positive things. It would keep consistent the people's power to select the, the, the mayor, even though it would be more of a ceremonial mayor. Although I underscore, and particularly in our meeting in Cambridge, uh, that the uh, Cambridge city manager said, uh, I have nine bosses, the nine members yeah, of the council. And, and if you're the chairman of the council, you're chairman of the board. And right. in any model, whether it's a private model or a public model, if you're chairman of the board of directors, that's a significant position. It's not just about marching in parades or, or hoisting up mm -hmm. a flag. Right. It's, it's, a, it's a serious uh, um, power position, if you will, being the chairman of the board. Mm -hmm. uh, so I see the benefit is that it gives, it continues to give the people the authority and responsibility, not only to elect a mayor, but then that mayor is president of the council, and it takes away the divisiveness that often occurs. So. So, 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 so I think that. that's a it's an interesting point, and I've actually seen it in some places where the top vote getter in the city will become the, the mayor or the city council, or city president, council president, yeah. which has, has been has done in, in several places. So I, it can be done that way. Um, I think I think go back to what I said earlier. Is that you have to be the gauge of your own community, and if you you're willing to to to, to get change, change can be incremental, and it's okay. And I've said this to other, to really small towns and to big cities, is that you can make change even if it's if it's significant change, it can be incremental change. And sometimes you need to do incremental change in order to get the bigger pie. And and what they what I experienced in Dedham was that they made one change. They went from a weak town administrator or executive secretary to a town to a fairly strong town administrator form to a to a to a to the higher town manager form. 
And I will tell you, they did that incrementally because they didn't think they could get it all done at once. So if you need to do what you need to do because you believe that the community would resist that level of change, but yet you think they still support a change in the structure, go for the structural change and then, and then accommodate the, the need that you can get that, you know, that people will still support. Thank you for that. Right. Mrs. Viveris, uh, you had your hand up. Did you want to follow up? I, I want to make sure that someone closed the door. I want to be sure it's not locked. We have an open meeting law, as oh, you know. Oh, absolutely, yeah. And if yeah. the door is locked yeah. and somebody, yeah. if you could do that, just, I just want to make sure that it's not, mm -hmm. you, you can keep it closed as long as you can get in. Of course, if you can't get in, you'll have to knock, Kyle, so we'll have to go get you. Yeah. <laughs> go ahead, Mrs. Viveris. Yeah. So it's actually a follow-up to this, this line mm -hmm. of uh, mm -hmm. discussion. So the new, the, the new uh, arrangement, if you will, with the, the mayor, however, whether it's elected top vote getter mm -hmm. or um, elected as the mayor, it would come with it a change in authority, I guess, mm -hmm. right? right. To, to more closely mirror the council form of um, administration, right? Right. You, right? And I think that's where we encounters some resistance from some. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just in terms of that policy setting in particular, uh, the strong mayor clearly is controlling mm -hmm. a lot of the policy decisions. So if the goal is to uh, shift that responsibility to a nine-member city council, um, even if there's going to be a mayor in place, it would seem that that mayor's authority, if you will, would have to be clearly defined and more closely um, resemble what the, the council's looking to achieve. It's almost like, uh, I view it almost like a team captain of the, of the nine city councilors. So in other words, to, to help, f help formulate and drive the, drive the policy discussion. Um, and I see that as a, it's a critical role, by the way. I, I, don't, I don't think that's, that should be underestimated in any way. Because ultimately, the, the policy of the city is, is driven by that process. So, um, so I think you know if you think of it from in that in those kind of terms, that the uh, the the the, uh, the, chan the president or the uh, the, the or the uh, or the mayor of the of the of the, of the council would uh, would still have a very significant role. But I also think that again, it goes back to what I said earlier: is provided that there's a good working relationship between that and the city manager. Because ultimately, those policies can sit pretty idle if, if they're not going to get carried out if the manager is having real challenges trying to get things done. So, Thank you. so just a, a few other questions. Um, I, my assumption, uh, and I've seen this uh, in, for the most part uh, in, in every place where I've seen a city manager form, is that the city manager's term is, is not ending in, at the same time that the elected official's term mm -hmm. ending. Right. So it's not a it's not coterminous with the elected officials. Right. Is that your general experience? I think that's true um, because you want to maintain that 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 little level of cohesiveness and, and consistency that you talked about earlier in, in your point. That I think that you want to have it so that there's always that that cont continuity in government that's being carried on uh, through that process. Mm -hmm. So I think to, to that extent, I think that's true. <clears throat> and then another thing that I've seen rather consistently is that the city manager. Uh, as a professional manager has been um, uh, not only restrained but forbidden for being po part of any political process, whether that be buying tickets or uh, representing elected officials at, at events. Is, is that generally the experience that you see with city managers, that they don't represent uh, the elected officials and they don't certainly buy tickets to that's political right. parties? That's correct. So political um, events. If, if you're an ICMA credential or if you're just an ICMA member, you're actually barred from being involved in any political uh, activities. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, and, and we've actually removed members from the committee, uh, from the ICMA, if they participated uh, in, in, in political situations, even if it, it's on the, in their own communities. So you, so in other words, even if you, say you work in Fall River, but you live in Seekonk, if you participate, you can't, uh, uh, you, 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 can't you can't be an ICMA member. Mm -hmm. So it's a very strong prov provision that we have. Um, so, and I think, it, I don't know if it's actually written into your charter that way necessarily, but professionally speaking, um, as, an, as a member of ICMA, you're, you're not allowed to do that. Mm -hmm. okay. I don't 
think I have any other questions. Uh, do any of my members uh, have any other questions they'd like to ask at this time? Mr. Okay. Keegan, is there any anything that you think we're missing in terms of, well, of the questions we've asked? Just, just a couple things that I think are important. Um, this, goes, this goes back to what I think in, in sort of understanding what the, the community wants. What kind of surveys have you done? What, how, how have you gauged the, the community's will in this issue about coming forward with a change? Because that's, that can be really important for success in this process. How have you, uh, how have you, how have you addressed that? Mr. Well, yeah, Mr. Quinn, just grab the, uh, as close as you can get that mic to you. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so this process started in 2016. So uh, with the Charter Commission and everything like that, and we revised the charter. We essentially built a new charter from scratch. Mm -hmm. Pretty much uh, found the foundation is Massachusetts state law, which is 75% right. of that charter. Right. But, um, I mean, we did, we sent a survey to every household in Fall River okay. um, with these questions, and uh, with, it was the broader, broad questions about everything, not, mm -hmm. and one of them was, would you support a town manager, uh, city government, or a strong mayor, weak city council, city government that we currently have? And the, it was a little split, I'd say it was about 60-40, I mm -hmm. would say. Around that, 55, 55 45. 45, I think, is yeah. 25 um, in support. So yeah. it didn't make that. So council for council manager? Right. Uh, right. right. Yeah. 45%. And, and I think the best point that you brought up is the um, just the nature of the community. I mean, us as a group haven't done surveys or anything like that. Mm -hmm. And I, don't, I think that's a little out of our purview, to be honest with you. But um, mm -hmm. uh, the, the community willingness, Fall River is a very unique place. And... No matter if it's a good thing or a or a bad thing, people are just gonna it's just gonna be a, a really thing. So a really tough thing uh, mm -hmm. to do this this process. I mean, mm -hmm. you either gotta truly think it's the right thing to do and hammer it through and show people how good it's gonna be uh, via um, going step by step and leading by example, mm -hmm. or and you gotta have the whole city council and and the president of the city council, the town manager, it's going to work perfectly because, in, and Mr. Ferris knows in this city, it's, it's, it's crazy. So, Politics is politics wherever you go. I mean, and as bad as you think it is here, it's, it's bad in other places too. And it's, it just depends on the level of, of, of place that you're in. Mm -hmm. But just to follow up with Mr. Quinn's comments, though, um, several years ago, the community did approve the Community Preservation Act. Mm. And at the time... People never thought that was going to get approved because it was increasing taxes in a, mm -hmm. an urban right. community. Yeah. And yet the folks that felt strongly about it worked extremely hard. They got out. They met people. They educated. I mean, it was a very intense uh, effort, but it ultimately got approved. And I think a lot of people were very surprised that it got approved. But again, I think it does speak to the idea that, that the effort that has to be expended to work with people to fully understand uh, what they're voting for, I think is going to be critical. So, so take that kind of a campaign to do the CPA, yeah. and you're going to have to multiply that by a couple to, to get this kind of a change through because that's because it's just, it's educational for the most part, and I think um, and and also some of it's it's based upon how people really uh, feel about their government right now. If they feel that change is needed on on certain levels, then then they'll probably come out and support that. But if it's if it's if they're comfortable with the way things are going, then certainly you won't get that level of support. But I think, um, you know, the, it, you're at a point now where this the approach that you're taking is the right one, for my opinion, just really strictly as a as a manager. But um, but I just worth the wise in this process that you really have to educate people on how it works and and provide the facts speak louder than words. I mean, they really just do. And and so you, the more facts you can present to people and and experiences that they can they can see for themselves and how well this works um, is, is clearly a better a better way to, to get the message across. Okay. Thank you. It's an interesting uh, thing about what Mr. Quinn just raised uh, uh, and what Mrs. Viveris raised as well. Uh, we were the first gateway community in Massachusetts mm -hmm. that voted for the CPA, and I think right. that spoke volumes about not only the organizing effort but also the I think the intent 
of the vote is to want yeah. to see preservation of, yeah. of historic properties and open space and housing and all of the issues that CPA addresses. So I give credit to the voters for right. making the right decision once yeah. they had all the information. Uh, but it was interesting back to go back, and I can go back a bit because I've been around a bit. When Proposition Two and a Half was implemented, uh, Fall River was one of the communities, uh, and sometimes it's a perception of ourselves that that uh, we come to grips with this. But Fall River uh, was one of the communities that opposed Proposition Two and a Half, and Cambridge was another community that opposed Proposition Two and a Half. And I remember reading two different articles saying, "Well, the people in Cambridge." voted to oppose Proposition 2.5 because they're very astute and erudite and they understand uh, that the imposition of a Proposition 2.5 uh, measure uh, would be detrimental to good governing. And then in a separate article, well, the people of Fall River voted against Proposition 2.5 because they weren't paying attention or they didn't really know what they were voting for and they just voted no because they were voting no. So here were two, a case of two communities that had the same yeah. basic vote and yet because of the stereotype of, 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 of both communities, there were different reasons given by at least commentators as to why voters occurred. I think Fall River voters are quite astute. Uh, Fall River uh, thinks of politics as it's uh, it's more than a spectator sport. We, our, our citizens get very involved in the political process. Well, well that's, and there's nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. I, I've always felt that that's, that's, that's democracy in action. And so you really need to make sure that that's, you, know, you understand that and, and, and recognize and, and, and work accordingly, you know, that you have that kind of a dynamic going on. But, you know, the fact that you passed the CPA is extraordinary in many ways because I've worked in some very sophisticated places who, who just refused to accept it. Mm -hmm. So, and um, it's just, it's varying reasons why people feel that way, but, um, but I think the reasons why you accepted it here were for the right reasons, to try and protect what you had, mm -hmm. and, uh, and maybe provide some additional funding for things that, that really you'd like to preserve further or create, yeah. which, is, which is something. And, it, and it's proven things. to be a great resource for I'm many, sure many projects. Sure uh, <clears throat> that concludes my questioning. Uh, are there any other questions from any of the members? Uh, so again, Mr. Keegan, we thank you. You've really provided us with some uh, good sense and from your broad experiences. Uh, we're happy to have you on the South Coast in Seekonk, yeah. so you're not far away. And uh, we'll leave, uh, well, he's, he's works Seekonk, there, but he lives in Seekonk. So, yeah, so, he so in we're, we're happy South. to ha have you on the South Coast um, as a resident. And, uh, and I hope that if we need to reach out to you, that that Absolutely. option av is available to us. Uh, we'll include your contact information uh, in our in our minutes, uh, do you have a card? Business I do. Card yes, with I you? do. In, in I do. So I, I just wanted to say thank you for inviting me down. I will. Um, my uh, I'm always available to try and help communities with this this effort because I think it's really important that uh, that communities you know you know fix what they think is needs to be fixed um, mm -hmm. because it's um, the good governance in, in my opinion is, is is the only way you can you can you can have. A, a representation where people feel comfortable with the, with the way they're being uh, where they're being led, mm -hmm. and I think this is a good process. And I give you a lot of credit for taking this on. It's not an easy project, so. Thank so, you, sir. You're welcome. Appreciate Thank you all that. Very much. All right. Good luck. All right. Take care. And then the uh, next item on our agenda uh, is a report uh, from members, and two of the three members who went to Cambridge on April 22nd are here. Uh, we were not a subcommittee, uh, so there isn't a committee report, if you will. Uh, there are, I think, individual observations that we can make, um, and I would ask Ms. Conrad if she wants to begin, or do you want me to begin? Sure, I can begin. Okay. Uh, well, I found it was lots of fun going to Cambridge and being treated like royalty, and the, uh, everybody, uh, what, five people came, came out and talked to us? I think they outnumbered us, and they were, they were very, uh, very, very, very willing to talk, talk and discuss. Uh, but, but one thing I will say is that it didn't seem very applicable to Fall River, because they have a very large, um, a very rich, rich area with an awful lot of industry, and uh, the, the mayor, the the manager spends a lot of time dealing with high-powered, high-tech industry and fancy colleges and things like that, which is not what the mayor of Fall River spends his time doing. I don't think. Uh, so it just seemed very different. I happen to know that my sister ha owns property that's valued at three times what my property is owned at, and her tax bill is one quarter of my tax bill. You know, they because they they get all their revenue from uh, uh, from uh, from from all those high-powered businesses and fancy colleges. Uh, so. Uh, 
they, they were lovely. And they seemed awfully confident. And it seemed like it would be a joy to deal with, to deal with Cambridge, the city of Cambridge, if that was what you got to deal with. And just one point, uh, are you, you finished? I'm finished. Uh, one point in particular that I was surprised at because we often think of uh, schools and, and religious organizations uh, as being non-contributors. Their biggest taxpayer in Cambridge is MIT because MIT invests in the community beyond its educational facilities. So it, it, it is true that they, uh, they, have, um, they have some uh, pretty good uh, foundation to get the revenue necessary to make that government work as it does. Uh, yes, in fact, we, we had uh, the city manager uh, present, uh, as well as the assistant city manager. I, we had the um, solicitor, who was their corporation counselor. Uh, we also had, I believe, was the auditor. Um, uh, and um, so those were the uh, f people that I recall. Uh, I'm, I was very impressed uh, with the, the format. Uh, in fact, I think you've all received a copy of the Plan E Charter, uh, which I initially, when I first asked our, our uh, Secretary um, of the City Council to get me a copy of it, I thought it was going to be a, a, a charter similar to our charter, which is rather large. Uh, I don't know how many pages we have, 40 plus or 50 plus pages. This is their charter, it's seven pages. And, um, and, it, and it addresses uh, many of the things that, that are addressed, although I'm sure there are some things in our charter that are not addressed uh, in, in, in this charter. Uh, but I, I feel that this is a definite uh, model for, uh, for us to consider as a uh, basis for presentation to the council and to the mayor. Uh, so I know that you just received this today, so I'm not gonna ask you to adopt that, but I would, ask, and I, and I wanted to uh, acknowledge that uh, Vice Chair uh, Kevin Aguiar sent me a uh, text message uh, indicating that he would not be able to be here today because of work-related responsibility, but he, he is hopeful that we, we are soon, that we soon will forward something to the council. Um, as was pointed out by uh, Mr. Keegan, uh, I think it might be important for us to do that, and then before submitting it to the council, to possibly have some public hearings around the community, uh, particularly at neighborhood associations, which are really the uh, the groups that are well established, and I would say maybe the Chamber of Commerce as well as uh, any other group that might be amenable to our presenting. Uh, I did present uh, to the Rotary Club uh, at their request uh, an overview, and I've also presented to the Democratic uh, City Committee uh, on just beginning uh, the beginnings of our work. Uh, but I think that before submitting to council and, and the mayor that it would be advisable if we are interested in submitting a, uh, a proposed charter that might incorporate uh, as its basis the foundation that, that we have in front of us uh, from Cambridge, um, that that would be an advisable thing to do. Um, also, um, uh, I want want to say that as far as I, I understand the, the differences that exist uh, between uh, our communities. Uh, however, uh, I think there are many similarities uh, that also exist in terms of our demographics uh, uh, and um, our diversity. Um, uh, and as I mentioned in the uh, Proposition Two and a Half story, the uh, even some historical votes that have been taken uh, where Cambridge and, and, and Fall River have voted similarly on issues. Um, the Lowell model, I've not been intrigued with. Uh, I find the Lowell model uh, to be uh, uh, political uh, connections serving as the primary basis for appointments uh, so that the, the information I have received, and I may be doing a disservice to uh, the city of, Cam of Lowell uh, in, in indicating that it's not as clean and professional a model as, I, as, as is appealing to me. I know Mr. Hessler has uh, been interested in a connection with Worcester, which we have not made, um, and maybe that could be something done between now and our next meeting. Um, 
we did, there is a value to going and speaking to them in the absence of their coming to speak to us. I don't think we, any of us would have expected any of the city managers to bring a staff of five to a meeting, whereas because we went to, to Cambridge, they were able to produce for the hour time that they spent with us a, 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 good, a good staffing. Uh, so, um, so if we did want to go to Worcester, I know it's difficult for people in business to take the time to do that, but if there's a date, uh, that between now and our next meeting where you might want to go to Worcester, at least two of or three of us, because uh, I think to go beyond three would then constitute having to call a meeting, in essence, uh, to to deal with open meeting law requirements. But since three of three or less of us uh, is, is not a quorum uh, that we can go to uh, gather information as we did for Cambridge. So uh, with that, uh, Ms. Conrad? Uh, yeah. One, one little bit of information I wrote down in Cambridge. Uh, they pay the counselors, each get paid, um, each counselor gets uh, $70,000 a year. The mayor gets 110000 He's elected from the counselors. The uh, manager gets paid close to $300,000 a year. So I just thought I'd explain uh, that, uh, yeah, it's, it's like Fall River, sort of. Yeah. No, we just for, just for the record, the councils in Fall River haven't had any even cost of living raise for more than ten years uh, now. So that the uh, the remuneration is something that's decided by ordinance. Uh, certainly, the the cost of living uh, in 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 Metro Boston, uh, particularly in Cambridge, is uh, probably four or five times what it is in in Fall River. I'm sure that uh, my $200,000 valued house is probably worth a uh, million dollars in, 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 in Cambridge. Uh, so, um, you know, there are, there are certainly differences, but there are also similarities. So any questions on, the, uh, on, on those of us? And Ms. Sadler was the third person. Unfortunately, she's not here. Uh, but yes, Mr. Hessler? Five minutes. So if there's something you need to vote for, I would ask if you if you need me here to take it out of order. Yep. I think it's just a minute. But I'm going to speak for myself. I, I know you mentioned. Just bring that, the mic uh, closer to you. Uh, I know you mentioned that I was interested in the Worcester model, only at the beginning, and only because it was told to me that Worcester had this type of government in place, and um, things seemed to be going pretty good over there. Well, the people that are presented all have presented in a positive light that things seem to be going pretty good in their communities, too. I'm okay with, with the information that we've gathered up to this point, and I'm, my opinion is we should be starting to think about what we feel would be a nice uh, form of plan, if you will, form of government plan to submit to the city council to get, to get some feedback from them, because we could be doing a lot more work here only to find out that the city council has no interest in this at all. I, I uh, agree with something that was uh, said tonight by Mr. Keegan that we possibly might want to take it in, in smaller steps and really try to simplify what we're presenting. And then if, they, if the city council members or the mayor feel that there's a little bit more that they want in detail, then allow them to have some ownership in that and, and help build it, because I think that's an easier way to get it passed. If we come in with something that is what we think is, or all set, this is this is it, this is the Mercedes-Benz of plans, we, we've got it all figured out, and there's something in there they don't like, I think we're dead in the water, and it's gonna take a lot more of our effort to get to that. From my point of view, I would like to see our, our next meeting be agree as a group on a plan, and and then get it submitted to the city council. That's my opinion, and uh, I'll yield. Thank you. Great. Mr. Hessler, thank you. Anyone else at this point? Uh, Mrs. Viveros? Yeah, and I can I concur as well. Mrs. Viveros concurs. I concur. I concur as well. I believe that uh, the, the seven pages that I've given you is, is my, in essence, submission of, of the foundation. Uh, I would see possibly some uh, some changes, but we can discuss those after you've had a chance to review this, uh, these seven pages, which uh, between now and the next meeting, I, I, I'd ask you all uh, to take a look at this. I'll make sure that the uh, two members who are not here uh, do get a copy of this as well. 
Uh, and in, anyone who's at home watching this, you can go on to the Cam City of Cambridge um, w official website and you can, um, can maneuver through the website to get a copy of their charter. Uh, this will also be part of the city record, um, this committee record as well as the city council record. So uh, you can also get a copy of it through uh, our uh, minutes of the meetings because uh, it will be part of the minutes of the meetings. So I've submitted this. I guess I would ask that the uh, that there be a vote that this be entered into the records uh, of this meeting so, so that it's available to the public. A uh, motion made by Mr. Hetzler that the plan E charter from the Second. city of Cambridge be entered into the records. Um, it's been seconded. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? So voted. We've already determined our next steps. Uh, I would say the next step is maybe just a, a month from now, maybe. Would that be okay, rather than two weeks from now? Yes. Um, so it, I, I don't have a calendar in front of me, but uh, maybe the second Wednesday of uh, June? The second Wednesday of Wilson. Okay, how about the first Wednesday of June? Or the third? I wouldn't, wouldn't want to go too late into June, especially if we wanted to get this. Uh, pick a date. I would have to check my work calendar. Okay, what is the uh, date of the second Wednesday in June? Is it, or the oh, first well, Wednesday? The so the 5th of June? Can we tentatively set it for the 5th of June? Yes. Okay, so uh, we've uh, set the meeting, next meeting of this committee at 3.30 on the 5th of June. Um, so that has been established. Uh, and that will be at 3.30 at the council chamber. And we do encourage public uh, to participate. Um, the minutes of the uh, April 10th meeting have been provided to you. Um, a motion to accept motion those minutes. Motion to accept the minutes as submitted. Uh, motion made. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Quinn. Uh, the motion made by Mr. Hessler. Uh, no omissions or corrections. All in favor, acceptance of the minutes? Aye. 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 So voted unanimously. <laughs> Opposed? Um, and with no further business before us, unless there is any further business before us at this I time? I to write down what the first motion was. Was it to? First motion was to in incorporate uh, the uh, Plan E charter um, from the City of Cambridge uh, into the uh, uh, minutes of our meeting. Well, okay. Okay, and then the um, next motion was to um, accept the minutes. And the final motion is now to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Opposed, so voted.